So now we're gonna talk about switches. Switches are what Ethernet uses to get information from one node to the next node. All right, in our switches module, we're gonna be talking about switch settings, common switch settings you can set up on your switches. We're gonna talk about MAC address learning and forwarding, which is really core elements to what a switch is. Then we're gonna talk about buffering and what buffering looks like and a couple different methods with which would be store and forward or cut through. And then we'll talk about the MTU size. You know, where things started out was, was using a hub. And in a hub situation, we already mentioned, when a port, when a, a frame comes into that switch, then that switch will then forward it out all other ports to all other end nodes there. So that's the way a hub works. The problem with is, is that all devices can listen to all traffic. So there is a security concern. Plus we have the issue with half duplex. So with a hub, we get collisions. So the difference with a switch is when a device sends a frame and it has some sort of destination MAC address on it, that switch is gonna determine where that frame needs to go and then send it out just that port to just that device. So it's getting sent just to that device. So we've added security plus efficiency. So now multiple devices can actually talk at the same time with the switch because it's not contention based. We've, when we add a switch to a network, we've now split this into from one big uh, contention based model or what we call collision domain into lots of smaller collision domains. So in this scenario, we wouldn't really have collisions because all devices are on separate ports of this switch. So we don't have collisions. We don't have to worry about that contention. Therefore, our system here is going to run much more efficiently since we have a switch involved here. So because a switch could actually be plugged into lots of different devices uh, or possibly even another hub, maybe it's connected into a hub or another switch, there are settings on the switch itself to set to full duplex or half duplex. And so this can change depending on what equipment is on the other side. And so we do have a setting on switches to set it to either half duplex or full duplex. Uh, by default, most switches are set to full duplex nowadays. And so therefore uh, you won't have any issues because most of our equipment is able to handle that. But there are times when you may need to go in there and set it to half duplex if you have certain equipment set on the other side. So another setting that's on the switch is the speed settings. Once again, you don't know what equipment is on this other side. And so you can set up the switch to have different speed settings on the different ports. Now, usually nowadays, equipment can auto-negotiate. So they auto-negotiate whatever speed that they're gonna communicate at, and you don't really need to worry about this. But there are times when you plug it into equipment where the speed needs to be set on it, and if you don't set that, then communication can, uh, can be hindered, and you can have a bunch of errors on your switch. So just be watching out for that. There could be some older equipment that you plug into that you will have to manually set speed settings on those ports. So another setting that's on your switches is auto MDIX. A lot of your switches nowadays come with this on there by default. But uh, what essentially this is, is let's take a look at a patch cable. So if I were to connecting two computers together, so let's say I have two computers here that, uh, that I wanna connect, maybe they're laptops or desktops or something, and I wanna connect these two computers together. When they're connected together with a straight through patch cable, they're trying to transmit on the same line and they're trying to receive on the same line. And so communication doesn't happen. So in this case, what we actually need to do is replace that straight through cable with a crossover cable to get these two to communicate. So that way the transmit that's happening on this line is going to the receive of this, this computer over here and the receive or the transmit from this computer is going to the receive on this over there. So we need a crossover cable. And so when you plug a computer into a switch, like what we have right here, uh, 
uh, it already, the switch knows that it's gonna be pretty much plugged into um, end devices here and they're gonna be set up one way. And so it, a switch is not set up another way. So it, it just requires a straight through cable to connect into a switch and doesn't require anything special. But between your switches, they, all of your switches are gonna to expect to plug into other devices, other end devices. And so when you plug a switch into a switch, you have to plug a switch into a switch with a crossover cable. So essentially, like equipment, usually you have to have a crossover for it to communicate versus uh, different equipment. Um, a lot of times that is going to be a straight through cable. Now, instead of worrying about, okay, where do I use straight through cables and where do I uh, use other types of cables, um, straight through cables, crossover cables. Uh, so rather than worrying about which kind of cable that you're gonna use, we have this auto MDIX. And auto MDIX IX is a feature that your switch can use to auto sense what it needs to be. If it's connected to another switch on the other side, then it will auto negotiate and create a link uh, that's appropriate for whatever connection that is. And then if it doesn't sense it, then it will default to, um, to some sort of a connection, the straight through connection. So this is uh, a feature that a lot of switches come with nowadays. So we know that a switch's job is to forward frames on a network to its proper location based off of the destination MAC address. But how does it know which port those different MAC addresses are on? So let's take a look at what that looks like. So that switch is going to have to somehow learn which MAC addresses are associated with which ports. And so it does this anytime a frame comes through that switch for instance if this pc here is sending out a message and it's going to this uh, switch then that switch is going to look in that frame it's going to look at the destination mac address so it knows where to send it but it's also going to look at the source mac address and see where the source mac address is coming in so if this frame is coming in through port one it's going to record that this is coming in through report uh, with through port one and then it's also going to record the mac address the source mac address into this table and then what it'll do is it'll keep track of this It'll keep track of the, of the different ports that are associated with the different MAC addresses. And that way, when another frame comes through there, and if it's destined for this machine, it will know that that is on port one and it can send it that direction. Now, when this machine does a reply to that machine and it comes through that uh, switch, then it will do the same thing. It will record, okay, well, this is, uh, this server is on port eight, and then it's going to record that that is a, with the MAC address into that table. So this table that tracks this, it will continue to track all of the different MAC addresses and their associated ports that are on this table. This table is called the MAC address table. So you'll see, hear the term MAC address table, or you'll also hear a CAM table as well. CAM stands for Content Addressable Memory. And so these are two, uh, two terms for the same thing. It's just referencing this table of MAC addresses to ports on a switch. Now our networks are very dynamic. So there's constantly machines that are being plugged in and being unplugged. And so a machine could go offline. This could even be a problem if let's say it's plugged into one switch and then that machine moves to another location and that all the switches have not had a chance to learn the new location, then there are some communications that can, can be missed and not make it to the end destination. So what we need to do is we need some sort of mechanism that will retire these MAC addresses over a certain period of time. So if a machine does not communicate on a port after a certain period of time, then it will expire that record, or we call this aging. That, that record will age out. So if a machine Machine, let's say this machine right here goes offline and over time uh, that if, if it doesn't renew um, that record then it will remove that record and it will age out that record. 
Now, there are some times when a machine has had, not had a chance to communicate or send any information out. And so uh, what will happen is, let's say this device has not sent out a message yet and this switch does not know where that machine is at. So when a message gets sent that's destined for this machine right here, that machine, uh, that switch does not know where that's located at and what it'll do is it will flood that message out all other ports. And then when this machine does reply and send a message back, then at that point in time, uh, that switch then will record that into its MAC address table. With a hub, now a message that's coming into a hub is then just directly sent out to all ports right away. But what happens with a switch is it is going to be sending out a message to only one device. But of course, how does it do that? As the message is coming in, there's no way for it to know immediately which device it's going to send onto. And so what it has to do is it has to do what's called buffering. It actually has to store at least a component of that message until it knows what port it can be sent out. And so buffering is, is the mechanism that does that. So there's some sort of memory on the switch. And so as a, as a frame is coming into that switch, that, that switch will actually store that frame and, and until it knows what port it needs to be sent out to. So that's called buffering. So there's two different ways that this buffering can happen. There is port-based versus shared. Port-based just means that the memory is already allocated for every single port. So every port has an allocated amount, a fixed amount of memory that's allocated to it. And then when that frame is coming into that port, that port will then store that in that memory. And then once it realizes where the destination needs to go, it will attempt to move it to the queue to go out that port that it needs to go out. Now, the problem with this is while it's waiting there, number one, that queue could fill up and it could start dropping packets. And number two is that that frame that's sitting there could hold up a lot of other traffic on it. So there's some problems with port-based. So the preferred method really would be a shared memory where it goes into a shared memory and as things come in, it goes into the shared memory, it allocates that memory dynamically and then it sends out the uh, another location. So you may also, with port-based, you may need a lot more memory involved because every single allocated uh, port needs to have a certain amount of memory involved where you might be able to get away with the shared memory with a little bit less because it can dynamically assign and adjust as the needs of that switch just adjust and the needs of each of the ports adjust. So another setting on our switches about buffering is how we're going to store that data and forward that data. So we do have a store and forward versus we have a cut through. The store for and forward is a slower process, but verifies to make sure things are okay versus the cut through tries to send it a little bit quicker. So with the store and forward method, what happens is the whole frame comes into the switch and that frame then processes it and it takes a look at the trailer and see, sees what the uh, consistency check is within the, in the trailer and does an error check on that frame to make sure that the, the frame is good before it sends it off to its next location. Versus the cut through is going to try to ex expedite that. It's not going to worry about if the frame is going to be fully accurate or not. It's just going to send it along its way. And there's a couple mechanisms that will do that. There's a fast forward and there's a fragment free. The fast forward is going to do it just long enough to read the destination MAC address. And as soon as it knows the port that it needs to go out, then it's going to start sending it along its way. So we're going to take up mess, uh, a lot less memory with this. Um, we're also going to expedite 
our frames to get them along the way. Although we could run into issues because um, we could be sending bad frames to the next location. So it could be inefficient in that manner. So that's the fast forward versus fragment free. We'll say, okay, well, I'm going to go a little bit far, farther than just the Mac uh, the destination MAC address is I'm going to actually take a look at the first 64 bytes. And the idea behind that is if there's some sort of collision that happens, it's probably going to be within the six, first 64 bytes of that frame coming into the switch. So fragment free just uh, takes a look and verifies, okay, is this going to be successful? There's no collisions. Okay, now I'm ready to send to the next location. So that's fragment free. And then just one note, bringing it back to the maximum transmission unit. This kind of sees why we need to know approximately how big these frames that are coming into the, the switch is going to be because that switch needs to know how to process and handle those frames. We have memory buffering buffering that happens on those switches. And so we need to be able to deal with those. And so having a set maximum transmission unit gives an understanding about what it is that we're going to be working with and what are we going to have to be storing and how are we going to build the hardware to be able to handle um, these these frames that are coming through there so uh, that's a little note about maximum transmission unit all right so there you have it switches we talked about some switch settings we talked about mac address learning and forwarding we talked about buffering and how there's some sort of memory that takes that frame in and stores it and then some way that it either needs to store and then forward it or it does cut through to get it expedited and get it along the way and we wrapped up with just a note about maximum transmission unit or MTU. I hope these videos are really helping you out. If it is, could you hit that like button?